The Rodecaster Pro 2 is such a revolutionary device for our current time, simply because of the price point and the features that you get. You get high amount of features and the price point is very, very reasonable for a device in this category or this class. You see, the Rodecaster Pro 2 has six physical uh, channels as well as three virtual channels. You can see here that the six physical channels are adjusted through these six physical faders. Here's the mute and here's the... Uh, uh, the solo buttons, as well as the modifier buttons here. So these are the settings for each of these different channels. Now you've got over here the three virtual channels. And in order to adjust those, you're going to use the rotary encoder. See, the rotary encoder is a push button and dial. Uh, so it allows you to make these adjustments easily. So to, let's say, for example, let's say we want to adjust uh, here. This is the, these are the sound pad volume. So we can just click on anything there and then we can go ahead and reduce or uh, increase that and we press the rotary encoder to complete that. Or if you want to go ahead and mute that channel, you're going to click on the uh, middle section again and you're going to click on mute. Um, now it sometimes depends, you know, these are small little buttons here so you want to either hit mute that or you can solo that. Uh, so that's a really interesting feature with this. Now it's not as quick and easy to adjust these virtual channels using the rotary encoder, but it's extremely simple once you get the hang of it. And so what you want to do is the strategy is you want to uh, apply your physical devices that you have, whether they're microphones or line input devices or instruments, and you want to put those on the physical sliders or the physical channels themselves. And then the virtual channels can be things that you're not going to necessarily adjust as frequently. So it could be the sound pads or it could be audio coming in from a computer system like a virtual channel. And that way you know that uh, the quick and easy things that you're going to adjust are applicable or easily accessible through those physical faders. Now let's dive deeper into the actual channels themselves. So you have here, you have six uh, physical faders uh, for those first six channels. Now I could either, either say one, two, three, four, five, or six, but really uh, those are just the numerical values because see one of the cool things about the Broadcaster Pro 2 is that you can dynamically change each and every one of these physical channels to any input source that is available on this Roadcaster Pro. So you can see here, uh, if I go ahead and choose channel one, right now I've got my lav mic that's set to that. You can see the audio meter is going up and down. Uh, however, if I click on the settings for number two, currently it's set for a condenser, but there's nothing physically connected to that device. However, I've got all the different microphones that I can select here. Now, if it's not a device that I want to connect it to, uh, in terms of the channels on the back, like the physical one, two, three, four inputs on the back, then I can go ahead and make different adjustments and set this to a virtual channel. And if I want to change this second fader to a virtual channel, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here to the settings with the cog wheel, I'm going to click on that. You can see the green area here uh, signifies that it is now on input number two on the back of the device. So I can go ahead and change that to any one of these other virtual channels that are available. Uh, so it could be a Bluetooth setting or USB 1 main or USB 1 chat or USB 2 or the different uh, sound pads. Now I already have the sound pads applied to a different channel so you can see here that each of these little colors means it's already been uh, assigned to something, either a virtual or a physical channel. Uh, now one other cool thing about this uh, Rodecaster Pro 2 is I can create stereo channels. So microphones are essentially mono, so they are just one, uh, they're not, they're not left-right stereo. But if I have uh, two microphones, I can go ahead and connect them into, let's say, inputs two and three, and then and convert them into a stereo input. So that left goes to, one goes to the left channel, one goes to the right channel, so you have this kind of like stereophonic uh, kind of audio. Uh, I can go ahead and change the uh, visual on it as well in terms of the color itself. So you can see here on the, uh, on the second channel, this is green. Now on your video, it's not gonna be as easily visible, but it's a light green, and this one's like a more rich green. Uh, this light green, I can go ahead and change that over here, and if I wanna turn that one red, then I can go ahead and click red, and, um, and then all of a sudden you can see that it is now red. So that's some of the really cool things about uh, this, uh, this new Rodecaster Pro 2. So again, if I wanna go ahead and change anything with regards to these physical faders or channels, I can go ahead and click on the top button here and go inside and either change the type of microphone that it is, or I can assign it some sort of another channel. So in fact, if I don't have any microphones 
on channels two, three, and four, which currently I don't, then I can go ahead and save these physical faders and assign them to other channels, to virtual channels, to things that are not connected to the XLR or line inputs on two, three, and four. So that's something really, really cool. Uh, and as you kind of advance your uh, systems and processes and get more gear, you know, that's something that you may look into doing is kind of getting rid of those uh, physical two, three, and four from the physical faders and then converting them into more of the virtual channel adjustments. Let's say that you just got a new XLR microphone and you've now connected it to the Rodecaster Pro 2. Now I've already got my lavalier mic that I'm wearing right now. I've already got this connected to this Rodecaster Pro 2, but I'm gonna go into the settings to show you how to make those adjustments because it's gonna be very important that you have the Rodecaster Pro 2 configured properly when you connect those uh, microphones and devices that you've got. So again, you've got those four ports on the back so you can go ahead and connect uh, your microphone into one, two, three, or four. And then once you're in there, what you wanna do is you want to dive into, let's say for example, I connected this new microphone into channel one. I'm gonna go in here. Because I've got a lavalier microphone that requires power, I'm going to go in and choose condenser because condenser uh, adds the 48 volts phantom power. So this is P48 phantom 48, which is on. Now the key thing is this, is that you wanna make sure that if you have a dynamic microphone, do not connect the microphone to your Rodecaster Pro 2 until you've disabled that phantom power. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you've, you've chosen dynamic on uh, this slider here because that by default is going to disable the phantom power, the 48 volt power. The thing is, if you left this on by accident and you connected your dynamic microphone, you actually may destroy or damage that microphone because there's it doesn't need power. Dynamic microphones do not need power. And if you send it 48 volts, you may actually damage that microphone. So be very, very extremely careful with that. Okay, so you've got different things here. Um, now let's say for example, I was gonna connect a uh, phone. If I'm gonna connect a phone to the line input device, I'm gonna choose line in. And then this level box here will change accordingly. So let me go through what this is. So let me, I'm gonna play around with channel two so that we're not gonna mess around with my current microphone. Line in is essentially a, uh, a, a device that sends a flat a signal, right? It's a device that sends a flat signal so that it's not amplified. Uh, and the reason why you need that is so that the amplification doesn't cause distortion on this unit. So you wanna make sure that you have a line-in device. So it could be some like a, a little uh, recorder of some sort, like you know the, um, uh, the little recorders that people bring, task cams and all those stuff uh, to concerts and things. Like if that, that has a line out uh, input, sorry, a line output line so that you can connect that from a three and a half millimeter into a quarter inch adapter and plug that into the back of this unit. So once you've got that, you can essentially uh, go ahead and plug that in, choose line in, and you'll see by default, it starts at zero dB because it doesn't need to be amplified most likely. So what you wanna do is you wanna place sound on that line input device. So let's just pretend I've got a, 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 a phone that has a three and a half millimeter out and I'm playing audio from that phone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug that phone in through the three and a half millimeter. I'm gonna send that out into this line in device. You wanna make sure that the phone, the volume is not at the top and it's not at the bottom, maybe somewhere in the middle, but just make sure it always stays even. Now that may cause some problems and you may have to get some other input devices in order to make that sound work properly, but this is just a, a an example, a simple example. So when you're playing that audio on that, let's say iPhone, um, you will start to see this meter move. Now when this meter moves and when it starts to peak into the green area here, that means you've got a good signal coming in. However, if the music is peaking on the low side, you're either gonna have to jump up the amplification on that iPhone or you're gonna hit dB up, 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 right? So you may have to add some gain to that. Now you've gotta be very, very careful because if you add too much gain on the Rodecaster Pro 2, what you do is you introduce a lot of noise. Uh, while the, while you know, the Rodecaster Pro 2 has amazing preamps and it's very low noise, et cetera, uh, noise is inherent in any device. So what you wanna make sure you do is uh, add enough ampli amplification from your output device and add enough gain on the Rodecaster Pro so that it doesn't have to, uh, so, you, so you don't introduce a lot of noise and things like that. Now let's take a look at the second uh, item here. This is going to be an instrument. So uh, by default, it adds 20 decibels of gain. 
probably because most instruments are very low in terms of the amount of output that they give, and so the Rodecaster Pro by default adds 20 decibels of gain. Now the dynamic microphone, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, essentially is a powerless, it doesn't require power uh, to, to use that type of microphone. Uh, so I've got, let's say for example, I've got the Rode Procasters. These are dynamic microphones. The Pod Mic is a dynamic microphone. The Shure SM7B uh, is a dynamic microphone. Uh, so, but what they did by default is they've added 45 dB of gain on here. Now my Rodecaster, Rode Procasters probably need about 55 decibels of gain, but that's probably just because I don't have my mouth pressed up towards the microphone itself. It's maybe three to four inches versus two to three inches, which makes a huge difference in terms of the proximity effect. Uh, now the next type of microphone here is a condenser microphone, and you can see here by default P48 turned on. So again, that's the phantom power, that's 48 volt power, which condenser mics require in order to power their capsules to power the device itself. Um, you know, there's videos that we have about the comparisons between dynamic and condenser microphones, so you can watch those uh, later. Now the next one, and the few after these, are specific Rode uh, microphones that they've pre-configured in terms of the whether it needs phantom power or and also the decibels of gain. So you can see here the pod mic has a default of 50 dB of gain. The broadcaster has 27 and it's a condenser mic so it adds the phantom power. The procaster is what I have. I have it by default that adds 50 dB of gain. I need about 55 or 50 plus. Uh, again, no phantom power on that one. The NT1, the NT1A, the RE20, the SM7B. Hey, wait a second, you're thinking, the SM7B, that's not a, a Rode mic. That's right, it's not, but it's an extremely popular microphone. And on the previous Rodecaster Pro, uh, a lot of people had that, and as well, they had the Shure SM7B. But the SM7B requires a lot of lift and a lot of gain. And so there's uh, devices out there, the, the Dynamite Stick and the Cloud Lifter as example, that increase the gain from that microphone without, in without increasing any of the background noise or that noise level, the noise floor. So what they've done here, Rode has actually added the SM7B and by default added 55 dB of gain, which is pretty average for what that microphone requires in order to be able to uh, sound good, right? Like you've got, um, You've got usually these faders on the Rodecaster Pro 2. Most of the people had their faders all the way to the top. And it was like maxing out. And then with the cloud lifter, they would be able to bring it back down to closer to Unity, if not a little bit higher. But that, you know, cloud lifter is over $100 extra. So now with the Rodecaster Pro 2, you actually don't need that extra boost. So you can just connect your Shure SM7B directly to the Rodecaster Pro 2, and you'll likely be able to leave it at Unity and have a good volume uh, um, amplification without any of that low noise floor. Now you may have noticed on the bottom right here of the section here, there's this little road symbol. Let me zoom in for you. Um, you can see here that there's this, it says off, right? This little O with a slash on it and then the off. This essentially changes the phase of the microphone. So if you're having some sort of a microphone feedback or some sort of noise that's happening in the line, you may, you may need to change that phase. It's kind of like a balanced microphone cable that has uh, a line coming back which equalizes or neutralizes the sound coming from the other side so that it actually d gets rid of extra noise. So anyway, that, that button there is on, uh, on as an option if you need to use that. But so far, I haven't had to. Did you know that you could have had access to this entire Rodecaster Pro 2 series? first, like a month ago, but you missed out because you weren't on my streaming platform called Nebula. And it's not just me, it is all my creator friends. We are putting an amazing amount of content on Nebula. Let me show you. You can see all the latest videos from all the creators on this platform. Hey, look, Apos Box. And you get original content that isn't even uploaded to YouTube from your favorite creators. You've got Nebula first, extended versions, maybe bloopers or extra additional information that you don't get on YouTube. Nebula first, things that are exclusive, early access on this platform. There's so much great stuff here. And here's the cool thing. Usually Nebula is $50, but with my exclusive link, it actually goes down to $333 a month for you. So you can find that link in the description. And that's it for channels and faders for now. Let's take a look at the next video.